Yo guys, what is up? Max and all Wonderland's video, and today we are going over the full skill tree reveal for the Blight Collar. Uh, they just posted every single skill, the passives, the action skills, so we're going to be going through everything. I haven't seen these yet, so like, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a first, first impression slash read through. I'm super freaking excited for it. Uh, we still do not know when this class actually comes out, as they haven't stated when it comes out. They just said it's in the near future, um, but Blight Collar class reveal today. Let's break it down. All right, let's get into this. Also, apologies, literally just woke up. Uh, but starting off, we have the class feat, Whisper of Rot. Applying a status effect increases elemental damage for a duration. This effect can stack. Amazing passive right off the bat. Um, the, like, class feats that are companions haven't been doing so hot at Chaos 50. So we got another stacking damage passive, which all classes will be able to take advantage of. Increasing your elemental damage is amazing. Next up, we've got our action skill, Plague Storm. The Fate Maker summons a Plague Storm at target location, dealing poison status effect damage over time in an area. Whenever the Fate Maker deals non-ability damage, a percentage of it is stored. The Plague Storm periodically creates elemental bolts targeting a random number of enemies underneath it, dealing ability damage of a random elemental damage type equal to the damage stored split amongst all targets, cl uh, clearing all stored damage. So, sounds like you're going to summon a poison cloud above enemies. It's going to be like an AoE. And as you attack things, it's going to store the damage that you're doing underneath it to call down lightning bolts or like poison bolts to hit enemies uh oh dealing a random elemental damage type so it could be any element um that's crazy so one we've got a big aoe action skill two it's scalable it's going to scale off of the damage that you deal because it's going to store a percentage of your non-ability damage so like high damage builds if you can pump up a bunch of damage this action skill is actually going to do work uh, and we'll scale with endgame stuff because uh, the further you are into endgame, the more damage you'll deal because the more damage you will deal. So that's really cool. I really like that they're like making that a scaling skill. Um, that's awesome. Next up, we've got Bog Totem. Summon a Bog Totem companion at target location, which periodically creates elemental spirits that seek out nearby enemies, dealing ability damage and exploding on impact. Elemental damage type is based on the Fate Maker's currently equipped gun when activated. Whenever the Fate Maker kills an enemy while Bog Totem is active, its duration is partially restored. Bog Totem has multiple charges and pinging an enemy will cause. So we've got a turret Bog Totem that it's going to summon whenever you, whatever weapon you pull out when you activate it is going to be its damage type, which is super cool that you can control that. And it sounds like it's going to be like a like a stationary turret basically it's like the spirit v version of axton turret that's very cool all right then we get into our skill tree let's do it uh virulence status effect application chance is increased and status effect duration is increased cool all right we're gonna be focusing on status effects with this character it sounds like next up geist in the shell gun critical hits have a chance to create a homing poison bog spirit that seeks out nearby enemies dealing poison ability damage and exploding on impact Gun critical hits have a chance of creating bog spirits that seek out enemies, dealing ability damage. That's neat. That could be a really crazy skill with From the Shadows. You go into From the Shadows, everything's a critical hit, and your gun critical hits have a chance of creating home and poison bog spirits. Could add to some like AoE clear speed that the Stabomancer mixed with this could have. The Stabomancer is probably a pretty good spec, anyways, because Stabomancer's like status effect stuff. Wraith Mail, Kill Skill, restores a percentage of your shield. That's awesome. That's very, very good. Uh, that'll help with survivability at Chaos 50 for sure. Uh, tier 2, Hex uh, Machina or, or Machina. Fire rate is increased when the Fate Maker swaps their current gun. Double this bonus for duration. Cool. Uh, faster fire rate means more chances at applying your status effects. Always good to pair with status effect stuff. Active Decay, increased poison damage. Okay, we've got a flat poison damage increase. That's cool. Um, so this is good, definitely going to be, if you want to make a poison build, good class for that. Flawless Edge. Gain increased damage dealt based on how full your ward is. The fuller your ward, the greater the bonus. Increased damage dealt based on how full your ward is. That sounds very cool for pairing. You could pair this with Graveborn skill when you're at low health. 
you deal more damage and go for like a deathless build and you're going to be killing enemies and getting your shield back uh that's really nice that might open up a lot of build possibilities that's a very good skill Next up, we've got our Tier 3's Worst Curse. Applying a Dark Magic status effect increases your spell damage and ability damage for a duration. This effect can stack. So you're going to apply status effects, and you get spell damage and ability damage. By the way, if you're using Contagion, you could get Dark Magic status effects. If, if you pair this with the, the Stabomancer, you could apply Poison and then get a Dark Magic status effect with Contagion. Next up, Bog Down. Dealing non-status effect... Poison damage has a chance to create a water nova. Whoa! Dealing non-status effect poison damage has a chance to create a water nova, soaking all nearby enemies. Soaked enemies take more damage from lightning and frost, but less damage from fire. This ability is a short cooldown. That's crazy. Um, so you have the soaked effect or the soaked class mod as a as a one point max skill, meaning you could pair this with literally any class. Like, you compare this with Berserker, you compare this with whatever, and you're going to be able to soak enemies without taking up a spell slot or a class mod slot to apply soaked. So, like, you could go, um, uh, Spore Warden and do a bunch of non-status effect poison damage with Spore Warden and Spore Fuse, and it's just gonna apply soaked for you. Uh, that's crazy. That's very, very good. Uh, amped up, applying a lightning status effect increases your movement speed and causes the Fate Maker to regenerate a per, uh, percentage of the reward per second. Lightning status effects. So we've got a bunch of status effects you just, you're gonna want to apply. You've got a bunch of bonuses. Applying a dark magic status effect, applying, uh, or I guess non-status effect poison, applying lightning is gonna give you movement speed and ward regen. Frostbite, applying a frost status effect increases your melee damage and critical hit chance for a duration this effect can stack. So you're gonna want to... Uh, it seems like you're going to want every element. Like, you're just going to want to do all the elements. You want poison, frost, dark magic, potentially. Or you could, like, specialize and pick one. But uh, playing a frost status effect will give you more melee damage and critical hit chance. That's very cool. Uh, good that that uh, works with frost, because frost is the melee element, because you get more damage against frozen enemies. Burnt Offering. Applying a fire status effect increases your gun damage and spell cooldown rate for a duration. Interesting. So the fire status effect is really good. Gun damage and spell cooldown rate is really good. That'll benefit just about any build. Uh, but you've also got the soaked built in. So, like, maybe you avoid soaked and go for the cool fire effect. I guess you don't really need to spec around fire damage. You do less fire damage. Even if you just apply a fire status effect, you're going to get gun damage and spell cooldown rate. Next up, toxicity. Applying a poison status effect increases your critical hit damage, companion damage, and action skill cooldown rate. You're going to have, like, a bazillion passives on this class like if you have a build that does all the elements and you grab all of these melee damage critical hit chance movement speed ward regen uh gun damage uh melee critical hit chance this will give you critical hit damage companion damage and action skill cooldown rate so like apply all the status effects uh clawbringer might be nice for that clawbringer will give you like passive fire damage and, and shock damage um restore the veil is this our capstone? No, 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 not yet. Uh, restore the Veil. Well, one point max. Life Leech from Dark Magic now restores Ward instead. Maximum Ward is increased. Maximum Health is decreased. That is huge. Um, this is going to make Deathless builds crazy. Life Leech from Dark Magic restores Ward. So you basically, this is like Bloodletter Moe's. This is legit like Bloodletter Moe's. You can now leech into your shield. And remember, there was that skill earlier that the more shield you have, the more all damage you'll deal. And then you've got skills that when you kill enemies, you get shield back. Uh, that's very interesting. So you can go like a Deathless status effect build. Um, spirit Swarm, applying a status effect has a chance to create a Spirit Swarm companion. Oh, this is our capstone. Okay. Big, big thing, big thing, capstone. Applying a status effect has a chance to create a spirit swarm companion that will seek out nearby enemies, dealing damage over time. So you're going to, when you apply a status effect, you get a spirit swarm companion that deals damage over time, or status effect damage. Damage dealt and damage type is based on applied status effect. Damage dealt and damage type. Damage dealt. So if you, if you proc a higher damage status effect, like, if you do a bigger dot, you're going to get a bigger Spirit Swarm. Or a higher damage one, it sounds like. 
Um, triggering spirit. Oh, damage, damage dealt and damage type is based on the applied status effect. Triggering spirit swarm again will refresh its duration and will use the new status effect damage. If higher, you, uh, you may re redirect the spirit swarm by pinging an enemy. Let me go through this one more time. Uh, applying a status effect has a chance to create a spirit swarm companion that will seek out nearby enemies, dealing damage over time. Damage dealt and damage type is based on applied status effect. Triggering spirit swarm again will refresh its duration and will use the new status effect damage, if higher. Interesting. So you're going to have... As long as you're applying status effects, you're going to be having a, a swarm companion. And that swarm companion could possibly be up infinitely because whenever you apply a status effect you have a chance of refreshing its duration and if you apply a higher dot it's going to scale it's going to keep scaling every time you apply a higher dot if you proc it it'll grab that higher dot so you potentially could have a very high damage spirit swarm if you spec into a scaling dot build um that old contagion build that got nerfed um plague bringer with scaling dots would have been insane with this like, like broken, insane. <laughs> um, but it sounds like this capstone means that you're going to want to be applying lots of status effects and those status effects to deal as much damage as possible so that you can get these plague um, or these uh, swarm companions, spirit swarms that will um, keep flying around the battlefield and, and proccing new status effects. This, this class sounds like it's going to be a lot of chaos. You're going to be applying tons of status effects to a bunch of different enemies. You've got plague storms. You've got totems. You've got like a s poison cloud nova thingy in the sky. You're going to be stacking elemental damage every time that you proc status effects uh, with your passive. Sounds like we're getting a very heavy poison status effect build, which is exciting. Um, just off the rip, innate synergies. Sounds like Stabomancer is going to be like perfect with this class uh you've got status effect um damage and duration you've got contagion you've got uh i think it's i forget what it's called it's like alchemy something uh that like you can proc a very high status effect off of a melee um stabmancer seems like it's gonna fit perfectly clawbringer with elemental damage increase clawbringer with like fire damage and lightning damage you could you could focus on three elements and then have the clawbringer side of your class give you the fire and lightning damage um graveborn or clawbringer for deathless builds would be really cool spore warden with um poison like uh, a spore fuse spore warden paired with this with like getting your shields back and crits applying poison and the soaked effect would be really cool i don't see spell shot and berserker working as neatly into this but i'm sure there's going to be some creative things that you could do with those classes like a uh a, a, a spell dot build maybe um or like a melee berserker dot build but you could also go stabbo for melee maybe like a more cryo focus with with the um with the soaked effect but yeah um i don't want to ramble on for too long guys that is the new class it sounds really cool um some things that i'd like to point out is it sounds like they're kind of learning a bit about building out these action skills they they identified and put a good passive that's actually going to be beneficial regardless of your class um and they gave us a scaling action skill that is going to scale with your damage and other abilities that are going to scale with your damage uh, which means that they should stay relevant even into the late game which i'm super excited for uh and we got some survivability skills with like ward a lot of ward stuff and a ton of different status effects. It's not quite as easy in this game to do a bazillion status effects as it is to Borderlands 3. So there's going to be like certain builds that will do all these status effects. But maybe we'll get new items with the DLC that comes out with this. That'll make it easier to apply a bunch of status effects. Or like new poison weapons would be really cool. Um, I'm assuming we're going to be getting a new class mod. That would be interesting. Uh, but yeah guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Let me know what your thoughts are on this class. I will catch you all in the next one guys. Take care. Peace. I was